Everybody want to focus on the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, Doc Rivers, uh, uh, Ben Simmons, and all of that other stuff. You know what I'm focused on? What the hell happened across the river? That's what I'm focused on. Brooklyn, stand up. KD, Kyrie, James Harden, home. Just like the rest of us. That's what the hell is on my mind right now. Not to say that the other stuff ain't on my mind. Because it is. And it's bad enough that's on my mind. With Molly and Max here. But I'm being touched by magic this morning. <laughs> Get ready, y'all. First takes in the house. Let's go. Both teams in a win of home situation. Something that most people think about more stake, obviously. Game seven is what everybody wants. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. We're starting to get some pace. Floats for Capella, who pans and flushes. There's a long three. And that might be the Sixers' season. This team is special, man. Winning this building game seven, a huge for us. Good day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into First Take. We have a five-time champion, a Hall of Famer, a business mogul. He can dress in a smile that lights up any room. Irvin Magic Johnson. So good to see you, sir. Thank you, Molly. Thank you for coming to the East Coast for oh, a hot oh, second man. for us. You'll yes. be with us the entire show. Oh, I'm happy to be here, too. My brother. Well, you know, you call, bro. I'm here, man. <laughs> Come on, man. And I feel you. Good to see you, Max. You right. too, Magic, always. And dress for the occasion. Uh, guys, we got a lot to talk about. Stephen A. teased it. Let's do this. <laughs> we ready? We're, ready? We ready? Oh, hell okay. yeah, ready. You, want, you want to start on the <laughs> East Coast? Because I can it. do that. All right. Let's do that. We start with last night's elimination game. The Hawks were too much for the Sixers in advance to face the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals. This series has been all about Trey Young and Joel Embiid. Embiid putting up 31 11 and 3, but it wasn't enough. Ben Simmons, meanwhile, struggled. Five points, eight boards, and 11 assists. And that pivotal play where Simmons turned down a scoring opportunity inside and passed the ball to Thibel. Joel, talk to me. I don't know how to say it, um, but I thought the turning point was just, you know, we had a, an open shot and, you know, we missed, uh, we made one free throw and uh, we missed the other and then they came down and scored uh, and uh, we didn't get a good pos uh, possession on the other end and Trey came back and he made a three and then from there uh, down four uh, and then I go, I, uh, it's on me, I turn the ball over uh, and try to you know, make something happen uh, from the perimeter. Um, and, um, but uh, I thought that was a turning point. Doc, do you think Ben Simmons can, can still be a point guard for, for a championship team like the one you guys want to become? Yeah, David, I don't know that question or the answer to that right now. Um, you know, so I don't know the answer to that. Gentlemen, pay attention to these numbers, uh, will you? So not Doc Rivers' best coaching effort, his fourth straight game, um, excuse me, his fourth straight game seven losses are tied for the longest such streak in NBA history. His 29 losses with an opportunity to clinch a series are the most among all head coaches. Rivers has an NBA worst 341 win percentage in such situations. Magic, you are up first. <laughs> Who looks worse here? Is it Doc or Ben Simmons? It was definitely Ben Simmons. Doc doesn't play. So we have to remember Doc has won a championship, so he knows what he's doing. Listen, when you're the second best player on your team and we say, hey, he's a star, he's been an all-star, you got to perform like one. And Ben Simmons did not do that. He wasn't aggressive. But the Sixers won lost this series in game five. That's who. If they had a won game five, they would have won this series. But they lost the series when uh, Coach McMillan of the Hawks did that hot hacker Simmons and they couldn't go to the free throw line and hit those free throws. And that's where they lost his series. And then he lost his confidence in game five as well. Right. And so now it's time for a new uh, destination, and a new place for Ben Simmons. It'll be great for him. It'll be great for the organization. Rich Paul's got to go out and do his thing as his agent to get him in a place where he can thrive, get his confidence back. Hopefully there's a star at another team who needs a, a change of scenery as well and bring that person into Philly. Fan base loves the Sixers in Philly, and this man can talk about that you know, more than I can. I played against the Sixers twice, so I know that fan base, they love the Sixers. And talk radio this morning is probably talking about you know, getting Simmons out of there. Mm -hmm. Doc Rivers prepared the team. But he can't shoot free throws. He can't knock down shots. 
First of all, here's the deal. <clears throat> there is no excusing what's going on with Doc Rivers. I love the man personally and professionally. Uh, but there have been several collapses on his watch. And this weekend is particularly devastating because the Los Angeles Clippers won a game seven and went to the conference finals for the first time in franchise history in Ty Lue's first year. And he did it the last two games, three games, without Kawhi Lue. Go look up Ty Lue in, a, in, when he's down in the series or I got when you. he's on the line. I got you. The point is, is that you consider what Ty Lue did in year one and that Doc Rivers didn't do it in seven years. And then on the same weekend, you lose a game seven to an Atlanta Hawks team most people thought that you were supposed to beat. This is not a good day for Doc Rivers, number one. No. But having said all of that, I roll with my man, my man Magic Johnson. Ben Simmons has got to go. He's 24 years of age. He's a star talent. Right. And I'm not saying that Ben Simmons should be given up on because he's some scrub or anything like that. It goes to what you pointed out, Magic. I know Philly. Yeah. I worked there for 17 years. I was a columnist for my last time. Let me tell you something right now. That city ain't going to ever forgive him for what they have seen. And here's why. Not just that he missed shots. He didn't take them. Yeah. See, when you see the Greek freak in Milwaukee miss or make, he takes them. Ben Simmons is literally scared to shoot the basketball. He gave up a wide open dunk because he anticipated he was going to be fouled and didn't want to go to the free throw line. 34% shooting in the postseason. For anybody who's attempted 70 or more, it's the worst free throw percentage shooting in the history of basketball. And this is a league Will Chamberlain and Shaquille O'Neal played in. Right. And they shot better for the free throw line than Ben Simmons. This is very, very bad. And when you take that into consideration, and you combine that with the fact that Philadelphia being a very unforgiving town, and they don't know how to let off and lay off, and they're going to constantly berate him, and it's mental yeah. with him, I don't believe he can overcome that, Max. In the city of Philadelphia, you got to move him. I'm going to say it right here on national television. Try and get yourself somebody like C.J. McCollum. Mm -hmm. Bring him to Philly. Send Ben Simmons to Portland. Because with all the perimeter That's guys they have in Damian Lillard, it would work. That's how bad his trade value has been diminished. I had, you know, now it's like, can you get C.J. McCollum for Ben Simmons? It was four years, Look, $140 million. Ben Simmons cannot be fixed in Philadelphia. I agree with you. And by the way, the Philly fans get such a bad rap for riding guys. How are they with Markel Fultz? When he was going through problems, that city supported him. Any little positive thing he could do, they're doing the same thing for Ben Simmons. The city's behind him. He just let him down. I think it's over for him. I think it's, they support him. I think it's over for Ben Simmons in Philly. Can Doc be fixed in Philly? I, I agree with you both. Ben Simmons got to go. Can Doc be fixed in Philly? Look at what just happened. Look, he, you're right, Magic. He's already shown he can win a championship. With a big three in a league that didn't have any other big three. They were the only one. Got one. Collapsed. More, more playoff collapses. The stats have been going around, et cetera, et cetera. And I love Doc Rivers. I loved him as a point guard for the Knicks. But we have to be honest about this. You can't play Dwight Howard in that game. Or, or Shake Milton. Like, those guys can't see the floor. He went 10 deep in a game seven. In a game. Think about what was happening in that game early on. Dudes who were getting cooked. Like, this is just coaching stuff. Gallinari was cooking George Hill. Cooking Seth Curry was getting cooked by, uh, by Herter, right? And then they're playing a backcourt of Trey Young and Lou Will. you got to punish that. Offensively, you have to. They can't play defense. you got to punish him. But with, with, with who? Who are you going to punish him with? Well, you know, if Tobias if, Harris would be nice if he showed up. Okay, but that didn't happen. Danny Green hurt. His injury no hurt, doubt. hurt the no Sixers. Question. So you can't judge Doc River until Danny Green is in that lineup. But this is it. You, you talked about last season. Doc Rivers wasn't playing against the Denver Nuggets. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George didn't show up in game seven. Jamal Murray outscored both of those superstars. One man did, right? So that's not Doc's fault. Same thing here. Listen, Ben Simmons got to take ownership and say, listen, this is what's going on out here. I know Joe. And B gonna give me thirty. I gotta get at least twenty to twenty-five for us to win. I'm not. What I'm, do you get for Ben Simmons? And who should well, want him? Well, a solid player. McCollum would be great because he can shoot. He has stretched the floor. He can play alongside. And he ain't scared of, to shoot. Exactly. That's for sure. Stephen A. Who do you think should want Simmons? 
I just said Portland. I think I think I think a team like Portland with the perimeter players and the style of play that they have, not to mention the fact that their Achilles heel is defense. Yeah. And Ben Simmons doesn't Great, have that. Great exactly. defender in the league. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody. But let me also add this. Here's what I will again. You're right. You're right about Doc Rivers. Here's what the point to though. Seth Curry is a damn good basketball yeah. player, and we've been very pleased about what we've seen from him. He's undersized against Herder. You know it. You see it. That's what I'm saying. You do very little about it. You gotta, you gotta. I understand Trey Young is a threat, but Trey Young was 422 before he hit from the damn logo in the last in the last minute or so. Okay, hurt is hurting you all game long. Right. At some point in time, you gotta make that decision. Get off of him. If you gotta double up to get the ball out of his hands and force somebody else to shoot, disrupt their rhythm, do something as opposed to keeping the undersized. I'm not carry on. Stephen A. Magic. You guys are right about Ben Simmons. There's no argument. I'm just saying Doc can't slide. Like, Brett Brown, you were calling, and you, don't, you take that very seriously. You're not calling for people's job, but you said you have to take a long, hard look at Brett Brown after a certain amount of time, yeah. right? He never got out coached like that. Oh, hell yes, no, he no, did. No, no, not like oh, that hell in, a yes, game, he did. in a game seven Magic, like that. Magic is here, so no. we, he didn't get to a game seven, yeah, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what I'm saying, other than Toronto, but let me, Magic's here, so I'm not going to get into it. But hell yes, he did. Doc not like Rivers, Brown. Doc go Rivers ahead. just got out coached as bad as you oh, can get did. out coached. No, he got out coached. Yeah. In game seven, we always look for a hero, right, on either side. And Herter happens to be the hero for the Atlanta Hawks. Well, he's matched right? up with a 5-2 guy. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, but he got it going. You got to give him credit. He got it going. The problem, again, goes back to this. Listen, game five, that's where they lost it. You, you can't overlook game five. See, in a series, the most important games, you got to win against a young team like the Hawks. When you have your advantage and you can pound them and get the victory, game five is where the, the, the series was, was either. The, I have a question that's right. for you, Magic. That's right. I have a question for you because the, the question as to where should Simmons go to me hinges on who can get between his ears. But There's a problem there. there. That's who, right. Who do you think is. And then just a couple of nuggets. Just a couple of nuggets. And then we got to get into commercial break. Uh, somebody mentioned Porzingis. I'm just I'm just getting texts literally. Mm-hmm. Somebody mentioned Porzingis. I'm not buying that because he's another he, he's another one that I don't trust. Somebody mentioned Bradley Beal. That's not going to work. The reason why is Washington would never do that deal because Russell Westbrook's problem is shooting. That's so why not, would you bring Ben Simmons yeah. to add no, with that? No, okay? it's not going to okay? happen. So you're not going to do that. And then I just got it on good authority. They were watching the game last night in Portland. There's a few people there that would not want. Mm. Simmons. <laughs> you said would not. Yeah. Would not. Okay. So who? So Magic. So who can get? Who can, who who can fix Magic while you were here? That, they're like, no, 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 no. Who we can fix his confidence? Just like you did. Okay. Who, who can fix his confidence? Like the whole question know. as to where he goes is know. who you, can get you, to him. You got to have a veteran sitting there that can hopefully get his confidence back for him, right? And also take the pressure off him. You know who he reminds me of? Equal Dollar. Same situation in Philly. Miscast as a one. Yes. Couldn't live up to the billing. Went to Golden State. Right. Great player. And great player. Yeah. Right. When he was the third guy, no pressure well, the on him. the biggest problem with him was his initials. See, he was AI. <laughs> okay. But he came to Philly with the initials AI after the real AI was in the building. For well, one thing about Iguodala, though, he was never scared no, to no, shoot. No, no, he was there was no fear in Iguodala. But I'm just no, saying the situation is almost the same where they didn't live up. To, to the billing of being drafted that high, and then he went where he could now be the third of Raymond, Clay, and Steph, and he found a perfect role. So don't give up on Ben Simmons. He's too young, just too not talented. Philly, just in just not in just Philly. Not That's in all Philly. it is. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's all we're saying, just in Philly. Just work on the free throws a little. Worst percentage <laughs> oh ever in the right. playoffs. Five well, well, the well, see, this is where young guys, this is where I get upset at young guys. Mm-hmm. You think you're all of that. And a bag of chips. That's yeah. right. Your game. And you haven't been working on your game in the summertime. That's right. Ben Simmons, Rich Paul, your agent, got to get you to work on your game yeah. all but summer. But maybe this, he got humble. You know? That's right. Sometimes we're picking the grapes. Sometimes we're and drinking Molly. the wine. We've all been there. And Molly, in the offseason, <clears throat> a half of them are in L.A. and Miami. No. Yep. 
You don't need to go there. Like, yeah. You need to be somewhere else <laughs> yep. working on your game. Not there. They're working, on, they're 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 working on their other game. <laughs> <laughs> they're working on their other game. They're working on their other game. They can't do it. They can't do it. No. I Not Miami it. and L.A. I, no. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Do you have a Stephen A's list for me? That's what I'm hearing. So despite scoring the most points ever in a game seven, Kevin Durant bounced from the playoffs on Saturday night. Stephen A has his top five reasons why Go Brooklyn this, did it. Advance Stephen A's list. Oh, imagine on love it. You better bring it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you know who did advance? That would be the Suns, and they didn't miss a beat, even without CP3. Just how badly did the Clippers need Kawhi back in order to keep up with Book? First take rolls on. It's just too many distractions. <laughs> you can't be going to play. Oh yeah. The man, the magic man is in the house, so guess what I came up with? I usually reserve Stevens A-list for the end of the show, but I wanted this near the beginning, Magic, because the Brooklyn Nets are home. They are done, just like the Knicks, but I won't rub it in too much because I was rooting for Brooklyn. New Knicks first, New York always with me, but here's the bottom line. There's five reasons, Magic Johnson. This is dedicated to you. Five reasons why the Brooklyn Nets are home right now. Let's go to number five on the list. Give it to me right now. Giannis showed up. Average 32 and 13. Wasn't scared of the moment. It's game seven in Brooklyn on the road after he did his thing in game six. What does he do against KD with KD putting on an absolute show? Giannis dropped 40. Okay, he didn't disappear. He didn't shriek in the moment. We got to give the Greek freak love where love is due. Let's go to number four on the list, please. Give it to me right now. Kyrie Irving's injury. We all know that if Kyrie Irving, that showstopper, Mr. Box Office, the nastiest handle in the game, one of the most skilled, Max Kellerman says arguably the most skilled plays you ever seen. If this dude doesn't twist his ankle, excuse me, the Milwaukee Bucks are not in the conference finals. It's the Brooklyn Nets that's here if Kyrie Irving had stayed healthy, but it didn't happen. Give me number three on the list, please. Joe Harris. Oh, oh, don't, don't get me started with this brother right here. I mean, you're supposed to be a shooter. You are supposed to be a shooter, especially when you're open. That's the key with Kevin Durant putting on the show. James Harden with the hamstring, still playing 46 minutes one game, 39 the other. Shows up for game seven. You got open shots, Joe Harris, and all of a sudden, you can't hit the damn river. It's right out here. You couldn't even shoot the ball into the river. That's a problem, Joe Harris. Look in the mirror this offseason. You had to jump for all year long until it counted. And then we couldn't find you as an APB out for you. Think about that. Let's go to number two on the list, please. Give it to me, Steve Dash. Excuse me, Steve Nash, never heard of a timeout to give Kevin DeBrant a break because you know how exhausted he is. He played 48 minutes for you in game five. He showed up in game six, was in a missed plan all 53 minutes in game seven. Think you could have called the timeout to give him a breather, a break, so he wouldn't shoot an air ball on that last shot after being completely spent? I won't get into some of your other substitutions. I won't get into some of the other things that you didn't do. But that was a flagrant error on your part, Steve Nash. You made a slew of them, and coaching clearly was an issue. But it doesn't eclipse number one. Give it to me right here. Karma. Oh, Why? Wow. Get out of here. Oh. Listen to this, Max. Stay with me. James Harden, love him. But won it out of Houston. Came into camp out of shape. Came into the season out of shape. You think that didn't have something to do with the hamstring injury? Good point. You ultimately incurred? Absolutely. I brought up coaching at number two, right? Remember, Kyrie Irving is quoted as saying at the beginning of the season, we don't really need coaching. Guess what? Kyrie, you were thinking about you. What about the other players that we're going to need to produce? Better coaching might have had those other dudes ready to help Kevin Durant in a game seven. Then you, Kyrie Irving, you missed some games. You took a couple of weeks off. You took off whenever you wanted. That didn't send the right message to the team. Blake Griffin, you didn't show up in Detroit. You stole money from the Detroit Pistons. You didn't want to play basketball. You didn't even dunk in two years until you arrived at Brooklyn. Okay, this kind of stuff ultimately comes back to bite you. That's what happened to the Brooklyn Nets. That is why they're home right now. If they were together, if they were committed, if they put in that work, constantly day in and day out not just as coaches but as players you would have been more together karma wouldn't have been against you and you'd be in the eastern conference right now these are my five reasons why the brooklyn nets are home watching the playoffs with the rest of us my apologies to kg kd because good god he was <laughs> sensational
I got to give it to you. That's, that's, that's the list right there. I take that list all day long. Karma, you won me over with karma. Yeah. You said stay with me. I did. <clears throat> you won me over with karma. But, but let, let's p- keep it simple. Injuries is number one, period. Injuries decide this whole playoffs. LeBron's ankle and you know, LeBron's wheel, whatever, and, and AD not playing. Every series, just look what happened. But I basically included Every series. it. In. I yeah. talked about I get it. The injuries is part of the karma. But, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but Kyrie is hurt and Harden's hurt. That wasn't James Harden. That was like a shell of James mm-hmm. Harden. But I told you why. Okay, Nash is right on the money. Nash, right after injuries, is Nash. It was easy to be the coach of that team when you roll the ball out and say, take us there, KD. Mm-hmm. But could, could you design some plays? But, but Maybe Max, take Harden out of the game? But, Max, everything you just said is right. But they still had a chance to win game seven. That's crazy. Yeah. All the things you just said, they still had a chance to win. If Joe Harris had a, just hit. Two or three shots. Or KD doesn't like airball shots, the right? last shot. Well, well, again, well he's that's, too that's tired. He's, he's too exhausted. Yeah. He's exhausted. I mean, you can't expect the I mean, the man did everything that he could to put his team in a position to win. He hits the almost, I wish it was a three. It's, it right. was a two at the yeah, end. I know. That was a killer. Because the feet was too damn. That was a killer. <laughs> but you know why I bring up the missed shot? You're right. KD played his heart out. It was amazing. But LeBron always gets held to the MJ standard. Right. Michael Jordan would have done right. that. Michael, right. Jordan, Michael Jordan never takes ever in a game seven the last shot with the game. Game on the line, air balls shot. Just never happens. So I'm just saying KD has played himself to the point now where he has to get the same comparisons that, that, I'm, that LeBron got. I'm going to break this down. Please do. We finally found out about the Brooklyn Nets. They got three superstars. The, the, the best entertainer in all of basketball, Kyrie Irving. James Harding played the best I've ever seen him play this whole season. And KD's on another level. He, the torch is almost being to- uh, passed from LeBron to him as the best player on the planet. But it's going to be the role players. If he doesn't improve those players around those three, they're not going to win it next year. Joe Harris can be a piece to bring in guys. You need guys. Just look at the Lakers. KCP, Rondo, Dwight Howard, uh, Caruso. Mm -hmm. uh, All those guys help the Lakers win. Mm -hmm. And you need those type of guys Mm -hmm. if you're going to win a championship. The three are going to perform well, Mm -hmm. but you need the other guys. Listen, and I'm going to go here with you. You're not just, you know, you, 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 you're magic. You're a champion. You know this game like the back of your hand. You also know the importance of coaching. Here's where I come to you as a star, basically the face of a franchise. It's not just that Steve Nash is the coach. It's that you picked him. Yeah. Sean Marks picks the coach you want. It don't matter what he came to you and suggested. If you said no... Right. Steve Nash wouldn't be the coach. Right. And so I'm thinking, like, let's take a time. If we can point, because there's only one thing we could point the finger at KD about this season. One thing and one thing only. KD pretty much followed and adopted the mentality of Kyrie Irving. It's not that important. We got a crew. We going to be all right no matter what. Uh, no, Steve Nash is going to be a I think they're going to win championship next year if they're healthy. But the point is this. Not a scintilla of experience as a head coach on any level. And you know how tough it is to win championships. And you would have that kind of attitude. I think for a champion like Kyrie Irving Mm -hmm. and for a champion like KD who know the game and know how important coaching is to have that kind of mentality is inexcusable. Your thoughts? Well, I think that, you know, both of those guys have won a championship. They know what it takes to win a championship. Sometimes you look and say, hey, we're good enough. We don't need a coach. But you do need a coach. Yeah. Timeouts or uh, adjustments. Yeah. See, the playoff, Molly, show you who can really coach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's when you earn your money. It's not during the regular season. It's the playoff. Who can make adjustments? Nate McMillan made adjustments. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can go to um, uh, the Back Phoenix Suns coach. Yeah, Monty Williams. Monty Williams yeah. made great oh, adjustments. I can blow you away with this. Brooklyn had a chance to have Ty Lue if they wanted him. 
Ty Lue makes Ty adjustments Lue. in every round. Uh, Ty always. Lue. Ty, Ty Lue might mess around with the best want, coach in the if, NBA. If, if, if That's Ty, right. Yeah, he might Ty be the best Lue, coach in the NBA. If Ty Lue is coaching the Brooklyn Nets, what are we saying right now? Let me say one thing, Stephen A., to you about this Nash sure. point. You won me over. You were on this Nash thing since the beginning. Because, Magic, yeah. I actually disagree about one thing. I think if the big three are healthy, they will lay waste to this league. The role players can mess up. But if the big three no, are healthy, no, no. because what you saw was what you saw, you never really got to see it. It, it doesn't happen but, like that, Max. It doesn't happen like but, that. Okay, I'll say this. You can't, you, can't, you can't just say that because I got three of the best players in the league, we're going to automatically win. It doesn't work like that. And they don't have defensive-minded cats. Listen, those three can score against anybody. Now you bring in one or two defensive-minded guys. Pay, uh, P.J. Tucker, what did he do for the uh, uh, Milwaukee Bucks? He brought a mentality that was different. He's not soft. All the other dudes before him were soft. So he said, uh-uh, we're not going to play soft no more. So, yes, KD scored 40-something points on him, but he made him earn every one of them. And that's what you need. Brooklyn needs mentality, a tough mentality. They got the scores, but they still got to get if some you, defensive it, minded I, I, guys. Magic, I'm not, I'm not arguing with Magic Johnson. I'll just say, if you and Michael and Larry played on the same team, Molly and me could be the other two people, you guys would have won all the time. Like, they have sick talent in that big three. But where I agree with Stephen A., where I think this comes into play about Nash, is what if someone gets hurt? What if now you can't well, we just roll happened. the ball out there going, coach? Bounced. He yes. was right about Steve Nash. He's right about mentality. He won me over with All the right. karma thing. I was right about ben Karma. Simmons. The number yeah. one reason Stephen A. says the Nets are not still in these playoffs is karma. I like that. Uh, who needs their star player back more? The Clippers with Kawhi Leonard or the Suns with their... Chris Paul sat out game one of the Western Conference Finals on Sunday due to COVID-19 health safety protocols. In his absence, Devin Booker came up huge... 40 points, 13 rebounds, 11 assists, triple-double to lead the Suns to victory. Meanwhile, Kawhi Leonard hasn't played since injuring his knee in Game 4 of the Clippers series against the Jazz. Paul George has stepped up with Kawhi out, but it wasn't enough to get a win in Game 1. Magic Johnson, which team needs a star to return more, Clips or Suns? Definitely the Clippers, because I think that with home court advantage going to the Suns, mm -hmm. you can win four games at home, right? and give up three games on the road. So I think the Clippers need Kawhi, and Kawhi probably wants to play and redeem himself, just like we're seeing Paul George stepping up because yep. of what happened last season. So I would say Kawhi needs to be back more for this series than Chris Paul with the Phoenix Suns. A couple of things. As an aside, I, I agree with, with Magic about that. Um, I'd also like to remind the uh, viewing audience out here that they're very, very lucky that Magic Johnson decided to just go back to being the ultra-successful businessman, <laughs> not running the Lakers franchise because the basketball world wouldn't be fair because Kawhi would have been in the Lakers uniform if this man was still there with LeBron and AD. I'm telling you what I know. He don't have to <laughs> I'm telling you what I know. Now. All three of those guys were out. Well, yeah, they were all, all three the, of them were hurt. All three of them. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. They said they had to limp their way to the <laughs> <laughs> right All right. Having said all of that, having said all of that, I'm going to tell you, it's Kawhi Leonard. Yep. Why, you want me to tell you why? Because without Kawhi Leonard, the Clippers ain't winning this series. Now, I give the Clippers major props. Ty Lu, exceptional job. And that environment Friday night was electrifying. Yeah. I've never seen the Clippers environment like that in my life. Okay, it was something special to behold. And them raining threes and that kid, man, who's right from the Bronx out of Florida State, it was special. You can play. Beverly hit, yeah. three, hit three threes. and uh, It was just crazy. It was unbelievable. Having said all of that, this is a different level because whereas you had Donovan Mitchell and basically nobody else athletically, particularly with Conley hurt, that's not a problem in Phoenix. They're a guard-oriented team with Bridges, all right, Booker, CP3 of these boys, a uh, uh, pain coming off yeah. the bench. I like them, but I want to say this for the record with Magic Johnson sitting right here in studio with me. I told you with Donovan Mitchell, that's D-Way 2.0. He's special. Devin Booker is the next Kobe Bryant. Yep. Yep. I'm saying it on national to Devin Booker it said it. is the yes. next yeah. Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Okay. It is official. His first playoff, his first playoff appearance. And the brothers are number one option. 
averaging over 28, dropped 40 in a triple-double in the first game of the conference finals. <laughs> this, and just the way he plays, he's an assassin. And guess what? This Clippers team, you need Kawhi back to knock that kid off. What, what did I now say before the series started? Devin Booker is a mini Mamba. He's yeah. the closest thing offensively to Kobe's game in the sense that he can kill you from anywhere. Yeah. Kobe was his mentor as well. Yeah, he's a mini Mamba. Here's he the thing, and I hate, I hate this question. I hate it because it's a hard question to answer. Who needs their star more? I'm actually going to say Phoenix needs Chris Paul more, and I'll tell you why. Chris Paul, like James Harden was playing the best basketball of his career. Chris Paul in the last series is the best he's ever played, and that is saying something in that career. That was perfect. I always ask Stephen A because of his relationship with Larry Brown. Like, Chris Paul must be Larry Brown's, like, that's how you, the perfect, that's exactly how you play it. Right. And that was the perfect point guard playing perfectly, right. right? Now, here's why they need that. Devin Booker gave you a 40-point triple-double at home. You won by the skin of your teeth. By the skin of your teeth. And if you think man can't play that way, man can play. He can play. Paul George can play. Rondo can play. They have a team full of guys who can play. They were on the road without Kawhi, and that late shot by Batum in the fourth quarter, I forgot how much time was left, it looked good out of his hands, may have changed, maybe they wind up winning that game, he's, he's off a little bit. That Clippers team is live without Kawhi? I think the Suns need, I, if, I think the Suns need Chris Paul. Matt, Matt, you were, oh, go ahead. Go. No, go ahead. Max, there's no maybes, baby, in the playoffs. You either win mm -hmm. or you lose. Right. That's all. By the way. That's, that's it. So, so, so Chris Paul can miss a game because of pain. Because he can run the show and Devin can score. Bridges is playing, man, off the charts right now. They got a lot of guys that can get you 10 points, 12 points, so on and on. The Clippers, if they're going to beat the Phoenix Suns, need Kawhi. Kawhi was playing some of his best basketball, too. See, we didn't give him love because he'd been dominant during this playoffs. So I think the Clippers really need him. And you got to go on the road and beat them. Yeah, you're going to have to take see, one on the road see, at you least. you got to take yeah. one on the road. So that's why I say Kawhi. And you're right about CP3. He's playing the best special, he's ever played. Special. But we know he's coming back. That's right. See, we know he's coming yeah. back. We don't know if Kawhi yeah. is coming I back. I don't want to make – I know we got to go. I don't want to make my brother Magic sick at all, but as an aside – um, I don't even want to make you sick, and I actually like making you sick sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I got to tell you this. I actually heard that um, Brooklyn, P.J. Tucker's camp, was telling folks he thought he was going to end up in Brooklyn. Yeah, That's the guy. No, no. He thought he was going to end up in Brooklyn, and for some reason it didn't happen. Wow. If you Brooklyn. Wow. How do you not grab P.J. Tucker? I'm telling you. Mm. How do you let that man. I, yeah. lo I love P.J. Tucker. Yeah. He, he, he reminds me of Michael Cooper, who I used to play with. Great in the locker room, great with the press, great with, right. like, and, and does the dirty work. Yeah. out here, fellas. Yeah. Let me yes. get this uh, break in. Kevin Durant. Now, back to you, first take. <laughs> yes, everybody. That was this date four years ago today. And as the mystery books indicate, you'd both be right, as Magic did get LeBron to the Lakers one championship later. I would say that worked out for L.A. Speaking of LeBron, guys, a lot of folks say he's still the best player in the league, that the torch has not been passed yet. Uh, so that's where we go with this next debate. So after scoring the most points ever in a Game 7, has Kevin Durant, I'm looking at you, sir, officially passed LeBron James as the best player in the NBA? Right Molly, now? not yet. Okay. He's got to win that chip. he got to win that championship. And they came up short, just like LeBron, LeBron and the Lakers came up short this season. So LeBron still ha has the edge on those championship rings. Uh, so I would say not yet. But I tell you, I was just taken back. And um, I've never seen a guy perform like KD did in that Buck series. And just like he was doing it from everywhere. So I was very impressed with KD. I've always, he's one of my favorite all-time players. And the way he can score, where he can score from, uh, it's just amazing. And I would say this, you know how the torch is being like this? Like, in the Olympics, <laughs> the yeah, you're they gotta it. work on that turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and KD is like, right. got his arm out wait, okay. waiting on it. And, 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 and let LeBron, me just bring this up. Turning, exactly. Right. Let me just bring this up. It's, it's just like 
Larry Bird and I, we were on the bus. That's right. We are on the bus. That's exactly I, I, what I was going to bring up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. You tell it. No, you tell it. First person. Somebody can tell it like you. That's exactly what I was going to bring up. It's yours. It's yours. Go ahead. Go ahead. You made me mad now. So we are on the bus. And uh, Michael Jordan looks at me, looks at Larry, and says, there's a new sheriff in town. That's right. <laughs> That's right. After and, practice. And, After yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And I said, uh-oh. Yeah. That's right. That's right. He That's was right. right. And he was right. He was right. Yes, sir. And this KD mm-hmm. is looking right now. Go ahead. I've said this to, Matt, to Max on several occasions. <clears throat> so it's the first year. KD arrived in Golden State. Mm-hmm. Previous year, they had lost in Game 7, OKC, Golden State. They beat LeBron in the finals, whatever. Actually, LeBron beat them in the finals that year. Saturday, Saturday. The next year, KD is going up against LeBron. And the first basket of the game, money, KD scores. And KD goes like this and spreads his arm out wide like, let's go. And what I was saying to Max is I said, in basketball parlance, that's when you saying to a guy, I'm here now. Yeah. See, you had me when I had the other crew. But now I got a crew like you do. Mm-hmm. Now it's me and you in KD's mind. Now it's me and you. And that series, even though LeBron averaged a triple-double with 32 points, triple-double, and he was sensational. Yeah. I constantly remind folks, KD averaged 35 on 54, 53% shooting. His brother wasn't playing. And what I'm saying to you is this. I'm partial to offense. I know how great LeBron is. LeBron has a better resume. KD got some work to do to to catch LeBron's resume. Right. But I'm talking talent. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the offensive talent of Kevin Durant, And I think about those 38,000 points that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scored. One guy in this sat up there and said, you know what, I feel like, I I, I think I'm going to catch this record. If he decides, I I just think I'm going to catch this record, he's going to do it. Because he's just that unstoppable. To be the sniper that he is at 6'11 with a 7'6 wingspan, who can finish at the free throw line? Let me say this line. real quick because we're going to run yeah, out of time real it. quick. So I'll put it, what's real barbershop talk? It's basketball and boxing for the most part, right? Mm-hmm. So let me make this barbershop for a second. Sure. LeBron had the undisputed title. Mm-hmm. There was no dispute to his claim, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like uh, Tyson Fury when he beat Klitschko. He's the undisputed champ. Then he went away for a while and Anthony Joshua was coming up, right? Now there's a dispute, whoever you think is champion. There's a dispute at least, right? right. LeBron, the title has not been taken, but there's a dispute. KD, the way he just played, has a legit dispute, has a legit claim that, hold on, I'm number one, and LeBron's going to have to go out and defend the title again next year. Mm. It's up for grabs. He's not the undisputed champ anymore like he was. I thought he outplayed KD in that first series with Golden State and Cleveland. I think you're right. Now there is a debate where before there was never a debate. Yeah. And so – it's going to be interesting next year for both of them, right? Can we finally see LeBron and the Lakers against Brooklyn in the next? Because we thought we were going to see that this season. But what has happened this season has been great for basketball. Atlanta Hawks, new teams, mm-hmm. new st- superstars. Now, Trey Young is a superstar, not a star anymore. Devin Booker is a superstar, not a star anymore. So this has been great for the league. markets like Milwaukee, a lot of teams we didn't expect. And then let's give him love because the Greek freak is a different player than he was the last couple playoffs. Mm -hmm. He finally understands what he has to do to be effective when they build that wall against him. And Chris Middleton, let's give him love. Mm -hmm. That guy is real at closing the games for the Milwaukee Bucks. I need to get your thoughts on this, though, guys. Uh, Coming up next year on First Take. There's a lot of Lakers fans here, but once the Lakers are gone, if we're not playing the Lakers, you should be cheering for the Clippers. And that's just how I feel because it's all one city. And um, I can just feel the love, and, you know, I'm just very happy and proud of our guys. Hmm. (laughs) You hear that? I heard it. You know I love Coach Lou. I wanted him to coach the Lakers. That's right. But uh, he knows that Laker fans are not going to be p- pulling for the Clippers. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. And this is what I will say to you. The best thing for Laker Nation 
is for the Clippers to win. You know why? Why? Because the comfort of being a Los Angeles Lake, I'm talking about as players in the organization, right. will be gone. And the level of fervor that you naturally have ingrained in you mm -hmm. would permeate throughout the whole organization because there's a champion in L.A. Mm -hmm. and it ain't you. Mm -hmm. We ain't having it. And so from that point, it wow. would hold Stephen that a, As you know, wow. as you know told. I lived in L.A. for six years. Did Max and Marcellus I'm with Marcellus Wiley, my man, on ESPN Radio. Magic, you remember. Yeah. And let me just tell you something. <laughs> Lakers fans find the Clippers adorable until they come up in the world. Then they hate them. Yeah. Right. They'd rather, they're a Lakers fans rather see the Celtics win <laughs> than the Clippers. No, 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 no. Lakers fans will never root no. for the Clippers. Oh. That will never happen. I understand happen. that. When, when Clippers come to Dodger Stadium to watch the Dodgers play and they put them on the screen, they boo. Boo. <laughs> boo. That's, that's, that's real fandom. Boo. That's loyalty. That's I respect it. Lakers wow. Nation always stands And my boy up. Chris Paul, when he was with the Clippers, Magic. they put him, they boo. Starting right. Now, hope you had a wonderful weekend. Greeny with you on a Monday from the Seaport. We are jam-packed, and we are full up. Take a look at the crew we've got over here talking football today. Mike Tannenbaum, Chris Canty, and Dan Graziano. The size disparity is somewhat jarring, even from here. We will have plenty of football to get to, but we begin, of course, with the NBA's Game of the Night, Game 7. Sixers hosting the Hawks. Joel Embiid, Trey Young. Pick it up in the fourth, a good game. Entering the fourth, Trey Young really struggling. Only 11 points, but he starts to cook when it matters most. Under seven to go. Hawks are down four, and Young gets this one to go, and it's a two-point game. Under four minutes to play now. We're tied at 86. What a night Kevin Herter had when they needed buckets. He was there to get them over Seth Curry. Atlanta's got the lead. Three and a half to play. Here's the play everyone is talking about this morning. Ben Simmons appears to have an open dunk. But instead, he gives it up to Matisse Thibel, who would get fouled. That's a wide open slam. Simmons did not attempt a shot in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, Hawks up one, three minutes to go. Young almost loses it. Then he throws it up, and Clint Capella throws it down. It's a three point Atlanta lead. 30 seconds later, same score. Young, there it is. He would finish with 21. Hawks up six. A minute left. Hawks lead is one. Big moment. Herter pulling up for three. Thibel gets him in the head. That's three foul shots, he'd make them all. Kevin Herter scored a team high 27, Atlanta by four. Next sixer possession, season on the line. Embiid, stripped, we're going the other way. Danilo Gallinari, uncontested. Oh my goodness, Atlanta wins. They take game seven, 103-96, advancing to take on Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference Finals. And for Philly, the questions will not stop. Man, uh, I'll be honest. Um, I thought the turning point was, uh, uh, you know, when um, I don't know how to say it, um, but I thought the turning point was just, you know, we had uh, an open shot. You think Ben Simmons can can still be a point guard for for a championship team? Yeah, David. I don't know that question or the answer to that right now. Still believe in him, uh, but we have work to do. You know, we're gonna have to get in the gym, um, put a lot of work in, and go for it. That's some pretty telling comments there from the two most important people on the team. Ben Simmons, as I mentioned, didn't take a shot in the fourth quarter last night, but that was not unusual. In five of the seven games of this series, he did not take a shot in the fourth quarter. By the way, he has four years and $146 million left on his contract. Here's Big Perk. Here's mm. P.J. Carlissimo. Gentlemen, let's get into it. Big Perk, what is the right thing to say this morning about Ben Simmons? Well, well, the right thing to say is is that Joel Embiid needs to get on the phone with Elton Brand, Dale Moore, and Doc Rivers and say it's time to break this up, meaning get rid of Ben Simmons, okay, and get him some Neil Sperm, Vaseline, I don't know what, because he's allergic to offense, okay, and he breaks out and hides every time he touches the basketball and it's time for him to score. Here's the thing. I don't even know if Ben Simmons is a point guard. I don't know if he's a forward. He might be a center. You might need to run pick and rolls and have him lob into the basket. But this is unacceptable watching him play. You are talking about a guy that was an all-star this year and you can't deliver 12 to 15 points, average that in this series. If you do, they win the, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers with a guy past the Hawks. It's just disturbing to see. I tried to give Ben Simmons the benefit of the doubt, but he's just not the answer, especially for this Philadelphia 76ers team. 
He had five points in total last night, as you mentioned. Uh, PJ, how much of it is fair? How, how, how much, how fair is it, I guess is a better way to put it, to place the majority of this on Simmons? Uh, it's fair, but uh, you got to deal with it. He's got a contract. He's got a, a track record of excellent play. I mean, Perk mentioned he was an all-star. He was an all-NBA player. He led the league in steals. He's a three-time all-star. Uh, you have to deal with it. Uh, last night, you know, any comments a coach or a player are going to make right after getting beat in the game seven when they're the number one seed and their aspirations for this year was to win the championship. That, that's fine. Everything's fine to say it right now. But what are you going to do? Ben's got some issues right now, and the issues have to be dealt with. He's also got a contract, but I mean, he's more talented than most of the people in the league. So, uh, you know, it's no secret. There's only 30 teams in this league. Uh, is his value down? Yeah, his value's down, but this is the NBA. There's a number of teams that would love to deal with Ben Simmons right now and try and straighten it out. So, so when you, I want to make sure I'm clear. When you say yeah. you got to deal with it, I get it. He's got a contract. Yep. You can either trade him and or you can try and deal with it. But what is it? What are you doing? They, no one has been able to unlock this. They bring in Doc Rivers to unlock the secret to this, and he can't do it. So what is the answer? What would you do? The answer is, you know, I don't know that I have the answer, but you have to try. You try and get somebody in to talk to him. His problems are in his head right now. It's not a question of ability. Is he a good shooter? No, he's not a good shooter. But he does enough other things on the floor on an all-league basis I mean, talking an all-NBA three-time All-Star. Who's kidding who? He's a great talent. Uh, you have to figure out how to use him, uh, and you got to try and get his head straightened out, assuming the problems are in his head. Here's the problem. I, I, I think you can yeah. both be right at the same time, Big Perk. The bottom line is you can be a good player in the NBA and be Ben Simmons, but he's not supposed to be a good player. He's supposed to be an elite player. He's supposed to be doing the things that the Devin Bookers and Kevin Durant of the world are doing in the playoffs right now. And, Perk, I think what you're saying is he just can't. Yeah, he, he can. And, look, this is the problem, right? We, we talk about him being a three-time All-Star and an All-NBA player, but right now he's playing like a role player. This is a guy that's supposed to be a Robin to MB as a Batman, and he's not delivering that. Averaging nine points is just not going to get it. I played with a lot of Hall of Famers in my career, and I know what to expect out of, out of, out of your Robin, and what he's doing is completely unacceptable. I mean, he's literally running away from the offensive end. He's shying away from the basketball. I don't know how do you fix that, because he's, he's proven to us time and time again every year that he's not going to take the shots. And here you got here you got a guy in Giannis, coach, that are taking three-point shots, are not afraid of the moment right now. Make or miss, he's actually taking those shots. And we just watched a clip where Ben Simmons passed up on a wide-open dunk. It's just, I don't know about this. Perk, I'm with you. That was inexcusable. But Joel Embiid had eight turnovers, including the one you just showed with 44 seconds to go. You talk about the turning point in the game. That was a heck of a turning point, too. So don't just throw Ben under the bus. Matisse Thibel files a guy and puts him on the line for three. That's a team loss. That's not a Ben Simmons loss. I hear you. But at, at, at least at the end of the game, Joel Embiid is on the floor. And Ben Simmons can't even be on the floor. They can't even put him on the court, PJ, because he won't touch the ball. They'll foul him immediately if he does. I agree. I agree, Greeny. Right now, there's no question. But again, what are we going to do? People that are going to want to take that trailer. opportunity. That's, That's guys, fine. Stay with me. Somebody We're else come back to them. this. A couple minutes, we'll get you guys back in here. We'll continue uh, sort of hashing this thing out because that's only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to that game and that series. And we'll talk about it with that man as well. The great Magic Johnson with us live in our studio, 9.30 Eastern this morning. Don't miss it. He'll also be on first take immediately following us on ESPN. In seven last night in Philly, the Hawks bouncing the Sixers. Doc Rivers, a part of the story. He's now lost four straight game sevens. Tied for the longest such streak ever. He has 29 losses with a chance to clinch a playoff series, the most by a head coach in NBA history. And as I bring PJ and Perk back into the conversation, we weren't talking about Doc at the beginning. We were talking about Ben Simmons. And I wanted to pick up where we left off. Big Perk, in your opinion, this has been called the process for an awful long time. And we have been trying to figure out some way to unlock Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons together. If it was up to you, Big Perk, did that come to an end last night? 
Yes, Greeny, hell yeah. Nothing is processing no more, okay? It's been canceled, okay? The cancellation and it's confirmed. And here's why. Look, Joel B needs a guy around him that's going to be able to get buckets and help him out. If you watched him late in the game, he was fatigued because he had to carry so much workload. He had to do so much because of the lack of ability of the production with Ben Simmons on the offensive end. He need a guy that's a certified Robin that can go get buckets. We have to remember, Joe M. B. is seven foot, 275, 280 pounds. Yes, he's special, but he's also injury prone. He also has a lot of wear and tear on his body at an early age. So they have to get rid of Ben Simmons. I'm sitting up here saying that right now on the get up to Greeny and Coach PJ, they need to trade Ben Simmons. I think a lot of people feel that way. He's not Batman. He's not Robin. He's sort of the riddler in this regard because it's a riddle that no one has been able to solve. So, PJ, we mentioned at the beginning, he has four years and $146 million left on his contract. So how would Ooh. you see that? If the Sixers do, <laughs> look, we just lost Pig Perk. Uh, PJ, <laughs> if, if, if the Sixers do decide that's something they want to seriously explore, how does that look? What, what then happens? Well, I mean, there's no secret. Everybody's watching what's going on. I, they'll be able to trade him. What kind of value they're going to get back, I, I don't know. Uh, clearly, it's Doc. It's Daryl Morey. Probably more important, exactly what Perk is alluding to. It's what their teammates feel right now. Uh, if those guys feel there's no way this is going to happen, then they have to trade him. That's not a desirable situation if you're a GM when the whole league knows you have to get rid of a guy with that kind of contract. Okay, so let's leave that one there for the moment. I, I want to move back to something that it now feels like it was a very long time ago, but the classic that we saw on Saturday night, Nets and Bucks, a Game 7 that goes to overtime. And we will have plenty of time to talk about Milwaukee as they go forward. They will open against Atlanta. Game 1 in the East is Wednesday night. But Big Perk, what did Kevin Durant show you in Games 5 and 7 of that series? As you watch those performances, what do you want to say about KD today? Well, well, Greeny, it just stamped what you and I were always saying, that he's the greatest scorer of all time, okay? But now he's taking the throne, and he's the best player of all time. The best thing that happened for Kevin Durant, and I'm not saying it in a negative way, was the injuries to Kyrie Irving and James Harden because we were able to see him do other things on the court. We were able to see him run the point forward position, get others involved, rebound at a high level, watch him lock in defensively, and boy, it's a joy to watch him play on the offensive end. He's such a magician how he's able to score the ball. So right now, looking at Kevin Durant and what he did against the Milwaukee Bucks, although they lost, he is the best player in the world to date, hands down. I think that's right. And, and you know, PJ, it's interesting for a guy who was a two-time NBA champion and a league MVP and obviously has been highly regarded. It is remarkable that I think his legacy, that it was a legacy transforming week for him in a positive way in a series that he loses. I think there was something missing from KD as far as a lot of people's perception of him. And I think he proved it even in defeat this past week. What do you think? I think maybe they didn't realize. I mean, I was lucky enough to get to coach he and Jeff Green when they were rookies. He is the best player in the league. Mm -hmm. He's also four years younger than LeBron. LeBron's the only one you can compare with him, uh, and he's four years younger than LeBron. I mean, he, he's incredible. He played 48 minutes in game five, which was ridiculous. That game, he played 53 <laughs> in game seven. I mean, it's absurd, and Perk makes a great point. He played both ends of the floor. He's third in the playoffs in block shots. He's up there in steals. Uh, he's magnificent, and he's a heck of a person on top of that. He's a great teammate. Is he the best player in the world right now? Big Perk says yes. We'll talk about that. Without no, without question. That's he, Perk and I agree. That tells you how, how clear it is. <laughs> <laughs> Perk and PJ both say it. What does Magic Johnson think? We'll ask him in an hour. Don't miss Magic live one hour from now here on Get Up. It'll be in our studio. We'll talk about the process. We'll talk about whether or not KD is the best in the world. We'll give you the one thing the Lakers need to do to get LeBron another shot at a championship. All that van to the East Final to take on the Bucks and afterwards. So many questions. Then uh, I'll be honest. Um, I thought the turning point was, uh, uh, you know, when um, I don't know how to say it, um, but I thought the turning point was just, you know, we had uh, an open shot.
you think Ben Simmons can, can still be a point guard for, for a championship team? Yeah, David, I don't know that question or the answer to that right now. Still believe in him, uh, but we have work to do. You know, we're going to have to get in the gym, um, put a lot of work in, and go for it. So Simmons doesn't take a shot in the fourth quarter, and that's nothing new. He didn't take a shot in the fourth quarter in five of the seven games of this series, including the last four. And, and let's pick the conversation up again. Magic's going to join us later in the hour. Big Perk's been with us so much of this morning, and Zach Lowe jumps in here as well. And, and I want, before Zach, I get all your thoughts on, on the possibilities of trades. Big Perk, I've been so focused on what Doc said all morning that really listening again to what Embiid just said, I mean, that is remarkable for Joel Embiid after the game to say the turning point is when we pass up an open shot. What does that say to you, Big Perk? Well, Embiid says that after the game. It's not good, Greeny. And usually when your superstar players come out there and they in their post-game interview and a, a, a reporter asks them a type of question like that, usually they say, hey, it was a lot of things that happened that we could have done better or I could have done better. He pointed the finger right at Ben Simmons. So you know what that goes to tell me, Greeny, is that he's been feeling this way all series long. This is this did just happen in this one play. Joel B has been feeling this way all series long about Ben Simmons and him being allergic to the offensive end. So Zach Lowe, on your podcast last week, I want to make sure I get this exactly right. This was after the Game 5 collapse. You said if they lose this series, I think they have no choice but to explore Simmons' trades. So they've lost the series. What do they do now? I think they have to explore Simmons' trades. Look, there's this no sugarcoating it. The Simmons thing is an ongoing disaster unfolding on a national stage. 2018 playoffs, he wasn't good enough. 2019 playoffs, he wasn't good enough. Injured last year. This year, even worse. The bottom line is the only time the Sixers looked like a real championship threat was when Jimmy Butler was there for that one season and they pushed Toronto to the limit in the Kawhi shot game. They haven't looked that way since. And Ben Simmons does a lot of great things, but offensively he's just disappeared and it's not good enough and the Sixers do not have enough offensive creation around Joel Embiid. And the only chip they have to play, after all the chips they had, after everything they got in the process, the only chip they really have to play now is what can we get for Ben Simmons? And I got bad news for the Sixers. The other 29 general managers, they all watched the playoffs really, really closely. They all saw all of this too. So this is going to be a really tough spot for them. It's worth pointing out they have, he has four years and $146 million left on his contract. That said, Big Perk, does it have to end here? I think what Zach is telling us is that they're not getting a King's ransom back for Ben Simmons. But in your view, even if they cannot, do you believe that is a move they have to make? Well, well, Grady, you know I'm about to hit you with one of my classic lines, the one I said it before. This situation in Philadelphia is, in Philadelphia is dead bird tall grass. It's over. You got to get Ben Simmons out of there. Listening to Joel Embiid, listening to Doc Rivers, it's over with. And Greeny, can we? Can I have a little segment on here real quick about yep. I told you so to Zach Lowe? Bring him back up on the screen. I need to see him when I'm talking to him because I told him about a lot of things that was going to happen throughout the course of this series. Uh, I told him that the Hawks was going to win. I told him that the Bucks was going to win. I told him that Rick Carlisle was not going to be the coach of the Dallas Mavericks. I was just waiting on the moment to get Zach Lowe on national television to sit up here and tell you, I told you so. There you go, Zach. Hold on, hold on. Did, 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 did you tell me that James Harden was going to pull his hamstring 17 seconds into the series and that Kyrie Irving was going to land on Giannis' uh, foot? No. And the Bucks, hey, and hey, the Bucks hey. barely won anyway? They barely won anyway? Come on, Perk. You know, hey, hey. Hey, it don't matter, Zach. I said Bucks and seven, and what happened? Bucks and seven. <laughs> he did have it, Perk. I'm tracking every. I'm tracking every Perk prediction from now on. I'm gonna hit you when you're wrong. You carry the hell on this morning, Perk. Okay, fair enough, Zach. <laughs> let me come back to you. I like it. Listen, there's nothing I love more than rubbing people's face in it. But once we've said that, Zach, let me come back to you here because this was supposed to be it for Philly. The Nets got, to your point, got knocked out on the other side of the draw. They're playing an Atlanta team that, for the remarkable run they had in the second half of the season, they're not reminding anybody of the 86 Celtics. So what do we say of Philadelphia here? I mean, this, is, this, is this officially the end of the process? The process has been over. The process was gathering the assets. They got all the assets. Some hit, 
some missed. This is the team. And the process has been over for a long time. They're the number one seed. The most valuable seed in the NBA this year was the number one seed in the East, the way the brackets broke. I said before the playoffs, it's a catastrophe if the Sixers don't reach the conference finals. This is a catastrophe for them. Yes, Joel Embiid gutted it out on a, on a bad knee and all that, but they should have beat the Hawks. They should be in the conference finals. That's no disrespect to the Hawks who have been awesome, but you're the number one seed. You have home court advantage. You can't win more than one home game in this series. Come on, this is a horrible result, but the process, the process has been over. This isn't about the process anymore. This is about this team falling short again. I guess that's fair. Well, so let's give you your first shot. Atlanta does go on, so we will be tracking these predictions. Big Perk, who's going to win the East final now? It's going to be Atlanta and Milwaukee beginning Wednesday. Zach Lowe is listening closely. He's going to write this thing down in pen. Who's going to win it, uh, Big Perk? That's fine, and I'm going with the Bucks and five. The Hawks might get swept. And there's no disrespect to Trey Young. I'm a fan of his and Nate McMillan. But the Bucks look greeny. Once they got past Kevin Durant and what he did, his, his historical performances, nothing is standing in the way of the Milwaukee Bucks. They're not afraid of anything. They got enough firepower. They're going to get past the Atlanta Hawks in five, and they might sweep them. All right, the Bucks don't stop here, says Big Perk. We'll keep a close eye on that. Gentlemen, thank you both. Again, so much more basketball coming up in this hour with so much drama in the NBA playoffs and literally no one better on planet Earth to talk about it with than this man. The great Magic Johnson is in our studio. He was on KJZ earlier. He'll be on First Take later. And we are delighted to have you here. It is great to see you. Thank you, Magic. And great to see you again, too. Right. And tell your son congratulations. Going to Northwestern, a Big Ten school. The we, and, and we play you the first That's week. That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that. But thank you. That's very nice of you to say. But let's get right to it last night. So, so much of the conversation this morning has focused on Ben Simmons, his lack of willingness in that one moment to take the shot. And again, in the last four games of this series, he did not attempt a single shot in the fourth quarter. What do you see in him right now? He's just not aggressive. Don't want to uh, be aggressive on the offensive end when he needed to be aggressive to help the uh, Sixers win. It, he needs a new start, a fresh start. So it's time to trade him. And it, it, it'll be good for the Sixers as well as good for Ben. And his confidence. He needs to get with a veteran uh, so that they can, you know, probably bring that confidence back and, and, and make him understand that if you're aggressive, it makes the team better. And then you got to work on your shot. What Atlanta Hawks did, Coach McMillan did a wonderful job of saying, okay, game five is where the Sixers lost this series. It's not last night. Mm -hmm. It was game five. They were up 20-something points. They should have won that game, didn't close them out. But Coach McMillan started to hack a Simmons, and he didn't uh, shoot the free throws well, and that carried over to game six and game seven. And now with the fan base being a great fan base in, in Philadelphia, you already know. It, all the talk now centers around him. You see Embiid say what he said. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time for Rich Paul, who is his agent, got to now get him out of Philadelphia. It'll be good for both parties. What Embiid said, for those of you who weren't with us earlier, was basically he thought the game turned in that one moment when Simmons passes up the shot. So, uh, so many different places I can take this with you because you are, uh, among other things, a former executive. So you know about the, the wheeling and the dealing. He's got four years and $146 million left on his contract, and the whole league just saw what we just saw. Right. So what can they get for him? Are they getting a great player in return for him? Well, they messed up and didn't get James Harden. That's, you know, he was supposed to be the centerpiece, mm -hmm. right? That's what the Rockets wanted, and they didn't make the move and didn't make the trade. But now they can still get a good player because he's a good defender, great defender. I shouldn't say that. Um, but one thing about contracts, another team has a bad contract too, right? Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> it's always teams willing to trade guys because maybe that guy is struggling in that other city, and he needs a fresh start too. So I look for the Sixers to trade him. I look for another team to take him because he still has a high ceiling and a high upside. He just needs to get his confidence going and get it back. And he's got to get more offensive-minded, Greeny. That's where he's going to have to improve. And he can't say now, I'm not going to work on my game in the summertime. To me, he needs to play more basketball, even getting in a summer league or something, play more basketball 
and just take shots from the outside, pick up games where that can bring him his confidence. So, so here's the most important thing I want to ask you as, as one of the genuinely greatest leaders in the history of American team sports. You say he needs a veteran. If you're that veteran, he comes to your team and you want to help him instill that confidence. You want to make him more aggressive. What do you say to him? Well, first, I'm taking him to the gym every day in the summertime with me. Right. And we're we're shooting, playing one on one. We're working out. We're probably shooting a thousand shots a day, both from the uh, outside as well as free throws. And I'm every day I'm talking to him, getting him going. And so then when the games come, every time he don't take a shot, I'm in his face saying you are open for that jump shot. You got to take the shot because that's what brings your confidence. The fact that you're doing it over and over again and finally you hitting one of them, right? That drive to the basket, he drove to the basket about five times last night. He had the dunk or the layup and he kicked it out mm -hmm. for a three-point shot. You can't do that. Not when they need you to score in game seven. And so I hope that uh, it works out well because I like Ben Simmons as a man and as a person. And so I hope it works out for him. All right, we'll see. So the Sixers go out last night. Atlanta, Milwaukee are now the two alive in the East. Another team that went out over the weekend was the Brooklyn Nets. And I want to ask you, because it's always fascinating for me to hear the Immortals talk about this kind of thing. When you watch the performance of Kevin Durant in Game 5 and then again in Game 7, what did you see through your eyes, who are one of the few people alive who could know what it is to play at that level? What did Kevin Durant show you? That, that showed me a Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan type performance. It, it reminded me of Michael Jordan against the Celtics when he got 60 and they lost. Mm -hmm. That same type of performance and everybody said, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting ready to be Michael Jordan's league, right? And so I think that Kevin Durant put himself in that type of atmosphere with those type of players, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and you only, we're, we're going to be blessed because we get to see more of this. Mm -hmm. Who else has come back from Achilles and performed like Kevin Durant? I think LeBron got one more year to be the man in this Kevin Durant's league right after that. Okay, well, so, okay, let's focus in on that because that was the next question. You're not willing to say right now Kevin Durant is the best player in the world. I think Kevin Durant is the best scorer on this planet, in the world. Um, I think that, yes, now they're running neck and neck. LeBron knows he's got to come back and have a great year, and his Lakers got to have a great year. But let's see what happens next season. LeBron, he can, he can just do everything. And so uh, he's not going to give up this crown too easy of being the, the best player in the world. You know, I'm remembering a day, and this is a very long time ago, you were working here and you were doing a telecast for us, and you had LeBron James on. LeBron James came on in an interview, and you said to him, congratulations, LeBron, you are the best player in the world. And I remember coming on my old show, Mike and Mike, the next day and making a very big deal of that. If Magic Johnson says to you, you're the best player in the world, that's a big deal. How important is that? He's been the best player in the world a long time. How important do you think that is to him, and what do you think he's thinking as he's watching Kevin Durant this week? Greeny is very important to him. You know, we got egos. <laughs> That's what makes us who we are. And so, you know he didn't want – he pulling for Kevin Durant because that's his friend. But – He still wants to be the man. He wants to be number one in the world. But he knows right now. It reminds me of myself and Larry Bird when we saw this guy named Michael Jordan. <laughs> we, we, we kept looking like this, saying, uh-oh, here he comes. And we both had to pass the torch to him. Right now, LeBron James almost is passing the torch to Kevin Durant. I'm going to talk about LeBron a little more in a couple of minutes, but let's focus in now on Durant's team. Clearly, the... the the overwhelming factor in that series, the injury to Harden and then the injury to Kyrie. If those three guys are healthy, do they win the championship this year? Um, I think they win it, but we don't know that for a fact, right? But we, we, I feel that they are so dynamic, um, and there's nobody in basketball like all three of them. The most, probably the best entertainer in all of basketball is Kyrie Irving. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the most dominant score is Kevin Durant. And then we saw the best James Harden we've ever seen. The way he played this season was 
unbelievable. And now they all have to come together. But Greeny, I would say this. I think they got to get a better supporting cast mm -hmm. for them to win the championship. And I think Joe Harris, they should use him as a trade piece to uh, bring in somebody. They need guys who can play both ends of the court and guys who can actually uh, give them extra possessions. Uh, so they're going to have to get the role players to be a little bit better if, if they're going to win the championship because everybody's going to build over the summer to beat them, right? And let's say Milwaukee wins it all. That's going to give them the confidence to go up against Brooklyn next season as well. They already beat them this season, but it'll give them the confidence to beat them next season. So I think they got to improve. All right, we'll see where it goes. Magic Johnson's going to stay with us. We're coming right back in just a moment with much more on this. We talked about LeBron. Is he back on Get Up? And as Magic and I here in the break reminisce about his career, <laughs> you broke the record for career playoff assists, playoff assists in 1985. Whose record did you break? It's either Bob Cousy or Jerry West, and I'm going to take Jerry West. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> you got it right. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what's the young man name in the back? Hambo. Hambo. Oh, yeah. I, you tried to get me, <laughs> but I had to say, okay, these two guys are the guys who played in the finals and the playoffs the most, right? So I figured it was one or the other. Okay. Well, not only that, because he got it exactly right. Jerry West was the one who broke the record. Bob Cousy is next. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, do you know who broke your record? No. Nobody even came close. <laughs> you, still have, you still have the record with 2,346 career playoff assists, and all of them as a Laker and obviously one of the greats of all time. And then your last act, really the great act as a Laker, was to bring LeBron James mm -hmm. to town. And So your friend Stephen A. Smith, mm -hmm. who you're going to see in a few minutes over there on first take, he comes on this show, yeah. and he says the Lakers' championship window is closed. What do you think of that? No, it's not closed. And they have to make some moves, though, because the West is so much better now. Uh, we're seeing it already with Phoenix and the Clippers, and we haven't even talked about Utah and Denver when Jamal Murray gets back. And so, I, and then the big three out here back east. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we have to get better, and they got to get some shooters to surround AD and LeBron with because Danny Green, that move hurt us. Rondo, that move hurt us because those guys brought something that we don't have anymore, right? Danny Green could shoot from the three-point line. Rondo with his basketball IQ and also be able to create shots for his teammates. Dwight Howard closing down the middle. So we miss those guys. So Rob Palenka just got to bring some shooters, help AD, help LeBron, space the court, and I think the Lakers will be fine. One of the big question marks about Anthony Davis, or about the Lakers in general, is Anthony Davis mm -hmm. and his inability to stay healthy. No one questions his right. brilliance as a player. When healthy, he's an MVP caliber player. But how do you handle him during a season in which, I mean, we hate the words load management on this show, and everyone hates them, but the reality is you need him to be healthy at the end of the year, and it doesn't always happen. How do you handle it? Well, Greeny, you're right. First, he's got to change what he's been doing over the summer. And I think he's got to get uh, somebody to stretch him. He also probably got to work with a physical therapist to make sure all the injuries that he had this past season, he's over those injuries, mm. and it can help him during the season next season, right? And then for the Lakers, I, I would say yes. Not low management as much, but make sure you watch how many minutes you're playing, watch back-to-back -back games, because he is injury prone. Before he got to the Lakers, he used to get injuries with the Pelicans. So we know that. The main thing for the Lakers is we just can't depend on those two guys anymore. We need a third score. We need somebody who can get us 15 to 18 points every single game. And that's where Rob Palenka got to make a deal or he's got to draft somebody who can do that. So who is that? What is that move? If you're making that move, what is the one move that could put LeBron back over the top? Well, what I'm understanding right now, because I haven't talked to Rob or Jeannie about this, I know Kyle Kuzma, who played great before those guys got there, he needs to be a second scorer on a team, right? And I think he can actually do that. Can I just interject? 
Someone has just <laughs> entered the room. This is about to be fascinating. The great, the great Stephen A. Smith has just made his look, way. Look at, look at him. Only look at him can. strolling, He's too. Got to walk. He's got, Stephen um. A. is here. He doesn't have a microphone on, I'm being told. But you know what? With Steve, you can hear him anyway. So it does. It does <laughs> I lean on magic. I lean on That's magic. Right. 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 I lean on magic. So he, I told him, you said the Lakers championship window is closed. He doesn't believe it. Well, listen, it's very rare that I disagree. Here we go. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's very rare that I disagree because, after all, this is magic that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, as presently constructed. This team, their championship window, they did something magic and the Lakers never did. They won the championship. They were feeling themselves. They were walking around as champions. Didn't, I'm not talking about LeBron because we know he takes care of himself right. physically. But there's a lot of dudes out there that didn't commit themselves to defending the crown they had earned. And as a result, you got all of these teams on a come up. They are what they are. As presently constructed, their window is closed. Now, if they go out and get somebody like Dame Dollar or Damian Lillard or something. That would be different. Is that on that. the list of options? I don't think so. Yeah. I think I, I, it would be nice. Yeah. But I don't know if they could do it. Yeah. What do you I think? think it's, I think it's tough to pull off that trade because you need assets to do that. I think there's players out there that can help the Lakers. Rob's just got to find out who that guy is. But Laker fans, we gave them a pass, right? We said, hey, they won the championship last year. We gave them a pass this season. But after that, no passes. They got to come through. They got to play well. But he was right. Sometimes when you win a championship, you, you, know, you don't work as hard over the summer. You don't look to improve. You don't look to get better. And I think that happened to the Lakers. But I think losing in the first round, mm -hmm. losing to the Suns the way they did, they're going to come back and, and be ready. Especially in cities like L.A., there are very many distractions. And so as a result of that, you have to maintain focus. And that it's easy to be distracted. And that happened. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. So Stephen A is just getting warmed up because they're going across the hall to do first take in a minute. But let me ask you the question. Because Magic Johnson is not willing to say that right now Kevin Durant is the best player in the world. He says that is still LeBron's crown to hang on to. I don't want to misquote you, right? right? That's what you just right. said. Right. Who's the best player in the world? I think it's KD. I think Kevin Durant. But here's what I will say. Magic Johnson, and it's not just because of his resume, the style of player that he was in terms of literally predicating his success, not just on what he was capable of doing, but what he peeled from people around him. That's why Magic would say that about LeBron. Makes perfect sense. I'm a scorer. I'm about putting the ball in the hole, okay? And when I look at KD, who has the same, who averaged the same amount of points as LeBron throughout his career, 27, 27 points per game, all right, around the same rebounds, considering the shooting percentage from the perimeter, LeBron is a career 73% free throw shoot. Over the last three years, he has shot less than 70% from the free throw line. Kevin Durant is 85 plus. The brother is a marksman extraordinaire. No and when I look at it from that perspective, I just think offensively there are levels to this, and LeBron ain't on that level. It's no knock against LeBron. It speaks to the level of eliteness that Kevin Durant has. He's one player but, that could possibly catch Kareem. But I said that, though. No. Right? See, I didn't no, know that. I didn't no, know. Nobody's going to be <laughs> right. Kevin Durant at that scoring. But LeBron getting everybody involved, making his teammates better. But the good thing is, it's always next season, and we're going to see. Because Who's going to win the championship is going to now say, okay, that's the guy now, right? If Kevin Durant leaves Brooklyn, then it's his league from here on out. If LeBron leaves the Lakers, then it's, he's going to still be the man. So we got to look and see what happens. You talk about getting up in the morning. Not only do you have magic, but you got magic with Stephen A. Lord. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Stephen A. across the hall. Magic is on his way there again. He does KJZ today over here and then doing first take right off the top of their show. Thank you, Stephen A. And thank you. Let me one more thing okay. as I have to let you go. So, and then there were four, and none of them have KD, and none of them have LeBron. You've got Phoenix. You've got um, uh, uh, the Clippers. Clippers. Mm -hmm. You've got Milwaukee. Yep. And Atlanta. It took me a second to put it all right, together right, in my head. Right. Who's going to win? I want Chris Paul and the Suns to win. But I think Milwaukee is going to win. I think it's Giannis' turn. He's been through a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And now, because of that pain, he, they're focused and they're ready to win a championship. But they better be ready to play these Atlanta Hawks because this young team is playing great basketball. But I'm hoping for Chris Paul, because it reminds me of Dr. J. Everybody was cheering for Dr. J to finally win his championship. 
he swept my Lakers and they won. And Chris Paul has meant so much to the league, just like Dr. J did back in the day. So I'm hoping Chris Paul wins. His team able to get him a win yesterday in his absence again in the COVID protocol. We'll see when CP3 is able to get back on the court. The great Magic Johnson has to go next door. It is such a pleasure to see you. Always, Thank you friend. so much for coming Thank in you here. Too. You are the best, the Thank best. Magic Johnson, again, on his way over to first.